Every week I'll be travelling here, there and everywhere, looking for stories that will make you laugh. Did you see what John Burrowman's had installed in his house? The back half of a 22-year-old man who got stuck for 11 hours. Torch wood. Is it, <laughs> is it just me or is Jon Snow on heat? After the break, calling all mothers, prepare to be wooed in the months ahead. <laughs> Watch out, mothers. Have you seen the Albanian version of Hole in the Wall? We don't mess about in Albania. <laughs> Did you see how mesmerised the Chinese kids were by Barack Obama? Unless all of you fulfil your responsibilities. <laughs> Unless you show up to go it wasn't quite the same for Gordon Brown. Never stop believing in the good sense of the British people. Never stop believing we can move forward <laughs> to a fairer, more responsible, more prosperous Britain. <laughs> Never stop believing we can make a Britain equal to its best ideals. Never, never stop believing. Cumbria this week had the heaviest rainfall on record. Areas of Cumbria have been devastated by record levels of rainfall which have led to severe flooding. Now, your heart goes out to everyone affected, but was anyone else a bit like me? You see the destruction and then you see the name of the town. We're live in Cockermouth. Cockermouth. Thank you, Julian, in Cockermouth. Cockermouth. This is Cockermouth. 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 High Street. <laughs> you can't not laugh. <laughs> It's like seeing an old lady get hit by a frisbee, you know you're gonna go. <laughs> you hate yourself, but disaster, silly place name, you're gonna giggle. <laughs> it's like finding out there's been a bushfire here. <laughs> or a diving disaster here. <laughs> Those brave moth divers! The only silver lining I could see was the reaction of the kids. We see floods, they see fun. Look at those kids! Their parents are going, we've lost everything! The kids have got that lovely glint in their eye that says, no school Monday! <laughs> the front roof's a swimming pool and I've been in a helicopter! <laughs> Did you see the people in the helicopter? I was thinking, wouldn't it be awful if you got winched to safety that one day you decided to dress as a gimp? Wouldn't that be brutal? <laughs> You've never done it. I'll dress up as a gimp this weekend. All of a sudden, you're on telly. <laughs> Just your wife. He told me he was on a business trip. <laughs> Don't leave, Mr. Munster. You rarely ever see the seedy side of flood damage, do you? They're always going, what have you lost? Family heirlooms? Wouldn't it be great to see a bloke go, no, on me pawn. <laughs> <laughs> the waters were too fast. <laughs> it came into me house and before I knew it, my copy of Schindler's Fist had gone. <laughs> Bastards, I'm not getting that back. <laughs> I came back to me flat, me vintage DVD of fear and loathing in my anus. <laughs> Ruined! <laughs> Turn the camera off, I'm not strong enough. <laughs> what I hate about any extreme weather, there's always some idiot, like the former Bishop of Carlisle, who cites this argument. The bishop has argued that pro-gay legislation like the Civil Partnership Act and the sexual orientation regulations are all part of a sweeping permissiveness, and what's happening now is a perfectly natural but also divine response. Moron! <laughs> he, he said the storms hit the UK because of our relaxed attitude towards homosexuality, which is ridiculous. In ancient Greece, all they did was read and bum each other. The weather <laughs> was absolutely lovely. <laughs> Steady on, Socrates, I nearly lost my page. <laughs> Fuck, it's hot. <laughs> Terrible result for Ireland this week. I have to send home John and Edward. <laughs> <laughs> Feel the rage. I wasn't on about that, I meant this. It's the goal that's even got Ireland's Justice Minister demanding a rematch. Thierry Henry clearly handling the ball before playing it back across the goal for the winner. Slowed down, the France captain even appears to have touched it twice, first with his arm and next with his hand. I'll tell you what, if Thierry Henry ever visits Ireland, his Guinness will look like this. 
Lovely laugh over there. I don't know if you can hear that at home. There was a man who went... Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> That's how you should laugh at a cock in Guinness. Ah. <laughs> the Irish fans were not happy. Cheat! 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 They're out! Henry the Sheet! Henry the Sheet! Luckily, the Irish knew who to blame. Irish cleaners are so angry with Henri, they are attacking their Henry Hoovers. <laughs> <laughs> what a fantastic reaction. I love the idea of some guy stumbling back from the game pissed. Where's the feckin' Hoover? <laughs> Don't you smile at me, Henry, you cheating little cheat! <laughs> I should have known you'd turn on me. All these years you've been stealing my dust with your great big French nose. <laughs> now, we all love it when someone makes a mistake. Tom Hanks, the green mole. <laughs> but Stupid has a new hero this week in Michael Burton, who got the lowest ever score on Mastermind. Seven points. He said pass more times than Ronaldo's teammates. Angel, in two minutes starting now, what's the meaning of the Greek angelos from which the word angel comes? Pass. 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 <laughs> pass. 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 Sixth century. The fourth century. <laughs> Seven points. Did you see his excuse? This was exquisite. I'm the black Jeremy Beadle. He's not. I've seen his hand. <laughs> and he also said it was a prank. Surely the point of a prank is to make other people look stupid. It's like hiding in a cupboard for three years ago. Hey! Fooled you! I've been hiding! Dad! <laughs> You've been declared legally dead! <laughs> Mum's remarried! He said he got seven points as a cheeky tribute to his seven kids. Surely a better tribute would be winning it. <laughs> Who's my dad? Only the worst contestant ever on Mastermind. <laughs> you must be so proud. I am nearly as proud as the time he went on Deal or No Deal and shat in a box. <laughs> they won't be proud. He just said pass over and over. If you're going to fail, then fail with style. Have a look at these genuine answers from recent exams. They are wonderful. These are all true. Here's the first question. What did Mahatma Gandhi and Genghis Khan have in common? Here's the answer. Unusual names. <laughs> <laughs> Name the wife of Orpheus, who he attempted to save from the underworld. Mrs Orpheus. <laughs> That's the way to fail. It gets better. Expand two brackets. X plus Y. There you go. <laughs> Just exquisite, isn't it? How does Romeo's character develop throughout the play? It doesn't. It's just self, self, self. <laughs> State three drawbacks on hedgerow removal. One, all the cows will escape. <laughs> Two, the cars drive into the field. And three, there is nowhere to hide. <laughs> this is my favourite. This is exquisitely stupid, right? <laughs> Name six animals that live specifically in the Arctic. Here's the answer. Two polar bears. <laughs> three slash four seal. Whoever wrote that, whoever's out there that wrote that, you are a genius. <laughs> but you've probably got no concept, because I doubt you were able to turn the telly on. <laughs> Just sat there rubbing it. <laughs> Mum, the magic box won't work! <laughs> It's been a big week for reality TV. I have to send home John and Edward. So... No, not that, right? I meant this. Now, she became a global sensation after her performance on Britain's Got Talent back in April, but even though she came second, Susan Boyle's debut album, which is released today, has already broken records. Yes, the website Amazon reports that it's become the biggest selling pre ordered album in history. Quite an achievement, but surely her biggest triumph is the success of her son, Frankie. <laughs> you should hear him sing. <laughs> Susan Boyle is the fastest pre-order on Amazon ever. Why? I'll tell you why. It's loads of kids who can't be asked to go Christmas shopping <laughs> getting it for their mums, isn't it? <laughs> Double click, done! <laughs> mums have to go mental. I wanted Ugg boots, not an Ugg singing. <laughs> 
She was called the Hairy Angel. How unfair is that? A nickname that sounds like slang for vagina. <laughs> Do you reckon now that she's successful, they'll call her the Beaver Diva? <laughs> her career is built on guilt. We all saw her and we all made a snap judgement. Look at that woman. I bet she goes to Tesco and shouts at the cheese. And then... <laughs> we all did it. We all did it. You can see her now near the brie. <laughs> and then she ruined it when she bloody did this. I dreamed a dream and time gone by. Well, we all sat there going, brilliant, she's amazing. Now I'm going to have to buy the album to stop feeling guilty. <laughs> That's the secret of talent shows. They win us over with a good sob story, isn't it? Pretty soon kids will walk on screeching, they found me in a bin! <laughs> <laughs> I've only ever eaten cat food! <laughs> Come on, everyone, get happy. Chase all your tears away. Sing hallelujah. <laughs> sob stories are good, but they can never compete with the joy of watching good old-fashioned lunatics. Are you ready for the people? <laughs> Some people applauding. <laughs> Some people thinking, I will never ask that lady to put up my shelves. <laughs> This week sees the release of a fat-busting pill that tricks your brain into thinking you're full. Here comes the fat-buster pill. <laughs> if you want a drug that makes you lose weight, just take heroin. Let's be honest. <laughs> you very rarely see a tubby smackhead. <laughs> Maybe this fat-busting pill is a good idea. Nobody likes the gym and home fitness is rubbish. <laughs> Wait, doing that? <laughs> she looks like she's doing an impression of a pensioner ejaculating. <laughs> God knows what this is, Tony. <laughs> and some of them are clearly designed by men. Introducing the Shake Weight, the revolutionary new way to shape and tone on your life, designed specifically for women. I think I speak for all men when I say that's the best way for women to lose weight. <laughs> Strange happenings in Germany. Check out this approach to bringing music to the masses. German orchestra to play in brothel. <laughs> It'd be a really weird way to get into classical music. Where did you first hear a daddy for strings? I was on the lead getting spanked. <laughs> Do you reckon it'll be like McDonald's where they play faster music to get the punters moving? I'll tell you what, if they played this, you'd be done in a minute. <laughs> music you don't want to hear during sex. <laughs> I'll bet you money Richard Wiley had sex and did that, you know? <laughs> da -da 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 -da. Oh! <laughs> he must have done! They were always having a laugh on Countdown. No. Constant, please. Now, great news for impotent diabetics. <laughs> I love the idea they sat at home going, hmm? <laughs> Chefs in Colombia have invented the love cake. Cooking students call their creation a love dessert. That's because the special pudding is made with passion fruit pulp, chocolate hearts, and a little of that blue pill, Viagra. Dig a day. <laughs> Do you know they're going to call it stiffy cocky pudding? <laughs> oh, very clever, very clever. <laughs> nice cock and pudding gag. <laughs> 
<laughs> you laugh, it must be a nightmare for the chef. Imagine that. Nearly ready. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, oh, no. <laughs> Suddenly he's got a boner that's harder than a Scottish winter. <laughs> It would really liven up working in a restaurant if there was Viagra knocking around. Oi, I've taken six. Grab those donuts. Let's play hoopla. <laughs> Go on, Trevor! <laughs> there is a problem with this. What if you don't finish your pudding and it ends up in a bin outside? I'm already scared of foxes. <laughs> If I saw one with a throbber, can you imagine the fear? <laughs> He'd look like Anne Robinson with a strap on. It'd be terrible. <laughs> It'd be a fairly easy fox to hunt, though. Just paw prints and a massive drag mark. <laughs> It'd be like chasing a scale electrics. <laughs> if you're serving this in restaurants, how long before we see it on this show? Oh, what a meal. Oh, How about man. that for a meal? <laughs> you know, you have the chicken oh, and then there's that. Oh, yes, oh, quite quite absolutely. <laughs> we had a lot of fun filming that. <laughs> there's been all sorts of sexual rumours knocking around this week. Do you know the latest on taking ejaculate into your mouth? If you take ejaculate into your mouth, it'll whiten your teeth. Oh, <laughs> oh really? Look at this. Good news for bad news. Cakey, breaky art. There's a bakery in Brighton who've started making divorce cakes. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen them, but they are fantastic. There's one for the angry wife. <laughs> There's one for the angry man. <laughs> and one for the psycho. If we've started celebrating divorces, why not get cakes for other weird times? Happy menopause cake! <laughs> hmm, it's a bit dry. <laughs> why is there no jam? <laughs> Did you run out of eggs? <laughs> I'm so sorry, Mum. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what was lovely about that, you just hear a man in the crowd go, ho, 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 ho. Oh, dear. <laughs> now, according to my mum, I finally made it because this week I appeared in heat. <laughs> don't, don't. <laughs> Weird crush 2009. You're right, madam. You're, yeah, whatever. <laughs> My mum was giddy. Oh, Christ, Rush, you'll be on Strictly next. <laughs> this is basically a list of all the men you don't want to admit you fancy. I was number eight. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Do you know what they said about me? He has dodgy teeth and a serious twitch problem with his eye. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out, ladies. <laughs> I'm the king of the monsters. <laughs> Do you know how I found out about this, right? I got a text message of this man. I genuinely did, right? <laughs> he texted me, oh, Captain Howard! <laughs> hey, we're doing Heat Magazine! <laughs> I'm number seven, you're number eight! <laughs> to be honest, I was quite pleased. Did you see who was number 12? Did you see who was at number 12? Barack Obama. <laughs> Sorry, that's not his name. Mr. Long-Legged Mac Daddy. <laughs> Did I beat Obama? He's tall, he's wise, he dances on chat shows. I'm number eight. I'm number eight. <laughs> I've yet to master the art of chat shows. This ring is extremely sparkly, is it not? That's a sparkly ring. Right? I like that ring. Very good, very good. How'd you like mine? Ooh. <laughs> You've both got lovely rings. <laughs> funny here, at five o'clock in front of pensioners, not really that funny. <laughs> but unbelievably, look who beat me and Mr. Long Leg Mac Daddy. <laughs> Son of a bitch! <laughs> the 
Bill Brown was number one. <laughs> but the funniest thing, this man was at number three. The Sting! <laughs> How can you fancy a man without a face? <laughs> you can't have sex with him, you'd be looking at your own reflection. <laughs> Nobody wants to look at their sex face. <laughs> <laughs> To be honest, it doesn't even matter. The joke's on you, nation. It's me! <laughs> now, this is the part of the show I genuinely don't know anything about. There's going to be a mystery guest who's been in the news and I have to figure out who that person is. So please all welcome my mystery guest. <laughs> How are you? I'm Ross. Nice to meet you. Hi, Ross. How are you? What's your name? Uh, Lewis. Lewis, you really thought hard then. That was lovely. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> if I could tell you my name, I forgot. Of course Sorry. you could tell me your name. <laughs> it's fine. Well, I'm... are you in government protection? <laughs> You're not really doing a very good job about it. Don't do anything, all right? I'll go on telly in a wetsuit. <laughs> Unless you're just really forward gimps. I don't know. <laughs> What's your name? Is I'm it? Jake. Jake. So, why are you in the news? Uh, we achieved one of our goals that we've been aiming for for quite a few years now. You achieved a goal you've been aiming for? OK, can you give me any more information? That's a sneaky line, that is. Tell us why you're in the news. That got the person last week, didn't it? They told you to stay away. <laughs> Have you done your research? Yeah. Let me <laughs> yeah. You have to keep doing some more questions first. You're not that easy. Well, yeah. <laughs> It's quite an active sport. It's quite an active yeah. sport. OK. Uh, was I close with gimps? <laughs> uh, miles, uh, miles away. OK. How often do you do it? Do you do it together? We, we can't do it... <laughs> <laughs> we do. We yeah, do yeah. do it together, but we can't do it whenever we want. You can't do it whenever you want? <laughs> <laughs> do your girlfriends know you do it? <laughs> we don't have girlfriends. No. <laughs> Women, though. You do like women? Yeah. <laughs> of course, I suggested that. Okay, surfing. Do you do a bit of surfing? Don't do surfing. You don't do surfing? Have you ever no. surfed? Yeah. Yep. Why don't you surf? Because we don't get the best ways where we live in Worthing. You live in Worthing? Oh, yeah. Okay, wow, that's gone down Ooh. big. <laughs> you live in Worthing? Oh, great. Well, am I allowed to hear you guess? Um, me, come, yeah. up, come up here and interrogate them with me. That'd no, be fine. Come nice on. Come on. Do you want to sit down? Um, oh, sorry, I've trodden your foot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll sit here. Hi. Hello, yeah, Hi. yeah. <laughs> Are you good? <laughs> no, we're not good. Um, oh, my God. <laughs> what is that? It's fine keys. I've lost my keys. Oh, my God, this... I don't know if you can see this, but uh, a lady has written in Byron on her arm, <laughs> find keys. <laughs> It's like the chaviest memento I've ever seen. <laughs> well, Matt, you can interview them and I'll stand here. OK. So, so if you know, is this allowed? It feels slightly like cheating, but I don't know. Has it been something to do with the weather recently? Yeah. Yeah. That's mm. correct. I've been waiting for it for a long time. You've been waiting for it for a long time? Yeah. And, and what's been with the weather recently, Russell? <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's been lots of wind. Yes. Lots of rain. Yes. Follow on the wind part. Uh, to do the sea, big waves. Yes. Um, what are we actually on? Oh, we're on a pier. Yes. Ah, fuck, fuck. I know. I know. <laughs> I actually, no. I do need you because you pretty much did the work for me. Yeah. Um, um, you're those guys that jumped the Worthing Pier, aren't you? Yeah. Wow, yeah. fucking great. Well, it's lovely to meet you. That's fantastic. That was so really great. Um, I don't know if you saw this. Hopefully, have we got the clip of them jumping? Oh, wow. Yeah, well, true. this is... You've got to introduce this. This is proper cool, right? I think it's fair that Jake does it, because he did it first. So. All right, nice. Right. Wouldn't it be great if, at this moment, Jake, just after you introduced it, you pulled her keys out your ass? <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Will? Um, on the Monday, uh, me and Lewis attempted... Yeah, to fuck you, Craig David. That's what they did on the Monday. <laughs> Yeah, so we've been waiting for over uh, a number of years now to achieve our goal, and on the Monday, 
uh, we have actually achieved our goal of jumping over Worthing Pier. Have a look at this cliff. It's oh, awesome. wow. Two kite surfers have taken advantage of strong winds to go and jump over a pier. The daredevil pair soared over Worthing Pier at a height of 70 feet, travelling 250 feet before touching down on the water on the other side of the pier. That is incredible. Well done, there we go. Great for the media. Thanks for coming up. Great. Jenny, thanks for the media. Really great. There you go. Do you want to go back? Thank you very much. Please give up for my helper. And please, a massive round of applause for probably my favourite, Mitchie Day! Now, the beauty of sport, sometimes it can be funny. Sometimes it can be brutal. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> and sometimes it can change your life. No one inside Wembley Stadium expected him to do it. He didn't even expect to do it himself. But when somebody offers you a quarter of a million pounds to kick a rugby ball directly onto the crossbar in one attempt from 30 yards and you're not even wearing your shoes, well, you have to have a go because you might just surprise yourself. How about that? The club hooker from Welling in Hertfordshire and the 46,000 fans at Wembley couldn't quite believe it. Stuart Tinner won the Saracens half-time challenge at Wembley and walked away with a quarter of a million pounds. Did you see the interview on ITV? It was incredible. They accused him of being an alcoholic. Had you had a beer before you kicked the ball? No. You were stone-cold sober? Stone-cold sober. I don't believe that. <laughs> Just for no reason. No, 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 you're definitely drunk. Look at you. <laughs> but he didn't stop there. They really started gritting him. Look at this. How does it rate as, as a moment in your life? It's definitely up there, top three. What are the other two? I wouldn't like to say. <laughs> I, I wouldn't like to say. <laughs> they ask him twice. Go on, say it. I wouldn't like to say. Say it! <laughs> but the poor bloke's going to answer. The entire country watching him. Do they honestly believe he's going to go, have you ever covered your ass in jam and move all towards a car? <laughs> They slammed his marital status. So Stuart Tinner, discreet, athletic, and loaded. He's also still single. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> ah, you're a loser! And they made him admit he was a really bad prostitute. I'm, I'm, I'm probably not the best hooker in England. <laughs> Harder than a pistol. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the show. Have a good night. Ta-ra. <laughs>